This is um, <laughs> astronomy, my, my uh, telescope for my own astronomy project. It, um, uh, on the basis that a rock is a rock, wherever you find it, I redefined astronomy as a practice of looking at an object from a great distance. And so I thought if I get little rocks and get my digital camera and zoom in to maximum from a distance in a dark space and get pictures, then I'd be doing something like astronomy or taking pictures, getting my own space photographs of strange things. Anyway, so what I did was collect some rocks and uh, asteroids and put them in space. There it is, floating in space. Here's my telescope. And here's my lens, ground by Italian craftsmen. That's a good view. And then I get my camera. And zoom in. I love it as a way of thinking. I, I just do. I love the idea that the science doesn't claim the truth. Inspiration of, of the scientist, which can be anybody, you or I or anybody, throws up a question, why is this like that? And inspiration throws up a possible answer. Could it be this? And then you look for evidence to support the idea that could it be this? And you find three or four things in agreement and you say, look to your friends, it could be this that causes that. And they, and they say, wow, what makes you think that? And you say, well, well, this, this and this. You must make it like that, don't you think? And they say, no, that's wrong. Can't you see there's a problem with that one there? And you say, oh yeah, it's not like that. And it goes on like that until there is a consensus amongst you and your friends that this, this, this and this, in those, under those conditions, causes this. That's why that happens. And everybody agrees that that's why that happens. But even that's not claimed as the truth, because another generation later on will realise that the suppositions you've been making are, are not the whole story, because they've managed to see things from a more wider perspective. I just love that. It's, it communicates down the centuries in a really exciting way. I am a landscape painter, and my paintings are landscapes. But the sketches that I do in the field don't seem to be what I want to show, and I don't quite know why, but that's that. It's because I'm in my studio most of the time, and I'm not in the landscape most of the time, and it's the landscape of, of your imagination is um, what's there in front of me. I wanted to remember where we are on a, a planet circling a sun, somewhere in a universe, indescribably tiny. And I wanted to celebrate where we are and kind of remain aware of everywhere else somehow and do it in an entertaining way. This painting is uh, from a car park that you park in when you arrive at Rendlesham Forest, or one of the places you can arrive. And these ears and these eyeballs are um, there too, if you are there. Because this is whoever is, happens to be standing there. So if you can just slide your brain somewhere into that slot, that puts you there. And Rendlesham Forest is a place I know quite well in Suffolk, and it's well known really for um, a UFO sighting or a series of UFO sightings in the 70s and 80s. The idea of UFOs is very interesting or, or people visiting from another planet is interesting because it makes you think of other planets um, or even makes you think of our own planet as another planet being a distant location and arriving. Far away places are strange because they're far away. It doesn't mean that they're intrinsically strange or any stranger than here. Everywhere is strange, everything is strange. Yeah, you know, we, we can't know what it's like billions of light years away 
because we're, we, we just can't. It's, it's just not going to happen. We're never going to get anywhere near that. But I bet if you got there, it wouldn't be that different from, from here. Look at it the other way around. We are billions of light years away from them. So how strange are we?